When you're out walking in the street, you can practice seeing some super important principles about your eye level and how that affects what you're seeing. It's useful training for your eye whether you're drawing landscapes, objects, or figures. Hi, my name's Kenzo, and this is Love Life Drawing. This series is about ways of training your artist's eye, even when you're busy doing other stuff like walking down the street or having breakfast. And you've got to take every opportunity you can to train your eye. Last time, we learned a bit about one, two, and three-point perspective and what those terms really mean and how we can start to practice seeing those principles when we're just walking down the street or having breakfast. This time, we're going to talk about another super interesting principle, the eye level or horizon line. We're going to start with some stuff that you may have heard before, but not yet practiced during your daily life. And we're also going to look at some stuff that I don't see explained very often that I think was super confusing for me. So for this part, I need the help of my teaching assistant, Maggie the dog. I set the camera up at my eye level. So the camera is roughly seeing what I would be seeing if I was standing here. I'm going to walk away from the camera. So here's my eye line when I'm far away. It's roughly at the level of the horizon too, but we can't see the horizon here because there's all this stuff in the way. As I walk towards the camera, my eyes stay on that level. Things that are below that level, like my feet, move further from that line as I get closer to the camera, so I get bigger. And Maggie is shorter, so her eyes are below that level of the camera. So they're below the horizon or the eye level line, and they move further away from it as we get closer. This time I set the camera down low. So now we're seeing Maggie's eye level. My eyes are above her eye level, so they're above the horizon line now. We're far from the camera, so my eyes aren't too far from the eye level line. But as we move towards the camera, they move further and further away from it. Maggie's eyes are staying on that line because we're seeing Maggie's eye level now. Now the camera is back at my eye level and I'm going to move up this hill and that has the same effect as if I was becoming taller. My eye level goes up but the camera level stays the same so it doesn't stay in line with my eyes and my eyes move up in the frame. So next time your friend is walking towards you or you throw a frisbee for a dog and they run back to you, notice how their eyes are moving. Are they going up or down relative to your eye level? Remember when we looked at this street and noticed how all the lines, because they're pretty parallel, they all end up at the same vanishing point. And that was pretty much on the horizon line. And then we looked at these serial boxes and noticed that they had different vanishing points because they weren't parallel. They were all pointing in different directions. But look, the vanishing points were all on the same line. And that is the eye level line or the horizon line. In this case, the level of the camera. So that's really awesome. I think it can be confusing when you talk about the horizon line this way sometimes. You might have all sorts of things in the way stopping you from seeing the proper horizon line, like some buildings or just walls if you're inside. If you went around the wall with some masking tape at your eye level, as you do, that would be the same level as the horizon line. Okay, so up until here, I'm feeling pretty good. Maybe even a little bit smug. I feel like I'm understanding perspective. I'm walking around town. I'm having my breakfast. I'm getting better and better at seeing this eye level stuff all the time. But wait, what's this? When I open the lid of this box, the lines of the lid are not converging to a point on the horizon line anymore or the eye level line. This is one of the things that I think often isn't explained and I found confusing because it's really nice and neat when everything goes to a point on the horizon. But here's the big thing. It's only the lines of things that are parallel to the ground that are going to converge to the horizon line. If something tilts so it's not parallel to the ground, the vanishing point could be above or below the horizon. 
So now it feels like chaos. I thought everything was going to go to the horizon line, but it's okay. The point it goes to will be directly above or below where the vanishing point would be when it was parallel to the ground. So it's just moving straight up or straight down depending on how it's tilting. That doesn't feel too bad. I think I can handle that. Rows of bricks are usually parallel to the ground. So when you're walking next to a wall, you can see the lines of bricks that are below your eye level will be angled upwards. The ones that are at your eye level will be straight across. And the ones that are above your eye level will be angled downwards, converging down to the eye level. All right, so this is where I reveal that this series is really an elaborate ruse designed to get people to think that you've gone bonkers. Because I'm going to ask you to just look at a lamppost next time you pass one. And then imagine there are lines going around it. Below your eye level, they'll be curving upwards. And at your eye level, the line will be straight. And above your eye level, it'll curve the other way. And that's really because the lamppost is straight up, so it's perpendicular to your eyes when you're looking at it. It's a useful thing to look for when you're drawing people. So if you imagine lines around your own forearm and hold it straight in front of you, you can see that where your forearm is perpendicular to your eyes, the contour lines around it are straight. But they curve one way above that point and the other way below that point. And we'll look at this more in a future video and how it's affected by the angle that the limbs are held at. But for now, it's worth looking at lampposts because if you can hint at these kind of contours when you draw people, it's going to add a lot to the drawing. So to end, I wanted to emphasize that it's really worth noticing these sorts of things during daily life with this quote from John Singer Sargent. Cultivate an ever continuous power of observation. Wherever you are, be always ready to make slight notes of postures, groups, and incidents. Store up in the mind a continuous stream of observations from which to make selections later. And as you can see, he knew what he was talking about. What an amazing artist. So, I'm going to make more of these videos. I think the next one will be about noticing different types of light and shade when you're out and about. There's some suggested videos on the screen. Check one of them out and subscribe because we're going to keep on making awesome videos.